morning to one and all present here. I am Alan Joy of Indian School Almabela, and I am here to take a lecture on the topic Bayes theorem. Now, guys, before we start with Bayes theorem, uh, it is important for you guys to know what conditional probability is. I'll help you guys recollect what it is. It, according to uh, the conditional probability, if if you want to find the probability of an event E given, this line denotes is can be read as given. If you want want to find the probability of an event E given that F has already occurred, the formula is given by probability of E intersection F divided by the probability of F. It is important for you guys to know this, so just keep this in your mind. Now, what is Bayes theorem? Bayes theorem helps you to find the conditional probability of any event. It helps you to find the conditional probability of any event given that some other event has already occurred. Or in other words, it helps you to update your estimation about the initial probability of some event when you now have some additional information or some other conditions depending on which the probability of this event changes. Now, let us look at what the statement for Bayes theorem tells you. According to the statement of mathematical statement for Bayes theorem, if you have any sample space S, which is divided into multiple events, like I am dividing my sample space here into three events, E1, E2, and E3, in such a way that these three events are mutually exclusive, that is, each pair of them, the intersection, their intersection would be phi. If their intersection is phi and they are exhaustive as well, that is the union of these three events would give you back the sample space. And if you have some other event A across the sample space whose occurrence depends upon event E1, event E3 and event E2, and if you are asked to find the probability of an event E1 given that this event has already occurred, then Bayes theorem allows you to do so using this formula. That is the pro initial probability of this event E1 multiplied by the probability of A given E1 divided by the total probability of A. Now, total probability of this given event A can be found as follows. This by the theorem of total probability. It, uh, it helps you to calculate the total probability of an event A by considering all the possible ways in which A can occur. So, uh, first possible way A can occur is by multiplying the initial probability of event E, event E1 multiplied by the probability of A given E1. And if you have n number of events, then you have to continue adding the probabilities up till E1, En. So this is the probability of total probability of event A uh, when three different events, that is when the sample space has been divided into three different events. So using Bayes theorem, if you want to find the probability of any given event E1 when an event A has already occurred, then the formula is given as probability, initial probability of event E1 multiplied by the probability of A given E1 divided by the total probability of event A. Now this term probability of E1 given A is called posterior probability and probability of event E1 is called the initial probability of event e, uh, EI that is no conditions have been applied to this event yet that is why it is called the initial probability of event EI. And this term is called the likelihood, that is the probability of event A given even has already occurred. And the denominator is the sum of to is the total probability of event A. 
Now students, let us solve a question using Bayes' theorem. By doing so, I'll teach you guys how to approach and effectively solve questions using this theorem. Let us see what the question says. A card from a pack of 52 cards is lost. I hope all of you guys have already seen a standard set of 52 playing cards. It consists of four suits of 13 cards each. A suit of diamonds, a suit of hearts, a suit of clubs and a suit of spades. A card from this pack of 52 cards is lost. Now once this card was lost, from the remaining cards, one card is lost, now you have 51 cards left. From the remaining cards of the pack, two cards were drawn and both were found to be diamonds. Once this, card was, once this one card was lost, you have now drawn two cards and it was found that both were diamonds. Now they have asked you to find the probability of the lost card being a diamond. Now if you guys notice, they have not told you guys that a, one card is lost from a pack of 52 cards and find the probability of the even, uh, probability of the lost card being a diamond. They want you to find the probability of the lost card being a diamond given that both cards drawn after this one card was lost is diamonds. Now this is where Bayes theorem comes into play. Now I recommend all of you guys to follow four steps while solving any question using Bayes theorem. The first step would be to draw the arrow diagram. Now this would be a diagrammatic representation of the entire question. This would not only help you to identify the events given in the question, but would also help you to approach the question in the right manner. So let's see what the arrow diagram of this question would look like. You have a pack of 52 playing cards. Now since the question has been uh, is from the angle of diamonds, I will also approach the question from the angle of the diamonds. You have a total of 52 playing cards of which 13 are diamonds. Now one card is lost and they want you to find the probability of it being a diamond. So there occurs two different cases. The first case is that the lost card, lost card is a diamond. And the second case would be of the lost card not being a diamond. Please bear with my handwriting. Next they have told you guys that after this card was lost, two cards were drawn, both were found to be diamonds. So the given event is two cards drawn are diamonds. So there you are, you are done with your first step. Next step would be to identify the events. As I told you earlier, it becomes really easy to identify your events from the question when you have done with your arrow diagram. So as you guys can see, your first event, E1, is the lost card being a diamond. And the second even would be that the lost card is not a diamond. So when I explained your total probability, I took the event which has already occurred to be A. So I will be taking the event which has already occurred to be A here as well. What is that event? It is the two cards drawn found to be diamonds. So now you have done with your second step as well. The third step is to find the initial probability of your identified events and the likelihood of this event. Remember what I told you guys what likelihood is? That is the probability of the event which has already occurred divided by, the, divided by your event. That is First, you have to find the initial probability of your event E1. Now, keep in your mind that no conditions have been applied on E1 yet. You have a pack of 52 cards, one has been lost. You have to find the probability of it being a diamond. You have 13 diamonds in this pack, 13 diamonds. 
So the probability of the lost card being a diamond initially is 13 by 52 or 1 by 4. Next, you have to find the probability of it not being a diamond. You have 13 diamonds in this pack, 39 are other cards you have in this pack. So the probability of the lost card not being a diamond would be 3 by 4. I have divided my sample space only into two events as given in the question. So next I will find the probable my likelihood of event A given that event E1 has already occurred. That is the probability of both cards drawn to be diamonds given that the f card I have lost is a diamond. So I have to draw two cards. I have already lost one card, I am left with 51 cards. So when I am drawing the first card, I have lost a diamond as well. So the probability of drawing a diamond in the first case would be 12 by 51. Now when I am drawing the second card, I have lost one card, I have drawn one diamond as well. So I will be left with only 50 cards. And I have lost a diamond, I have drawn a diamond already, I have taken out from the pack and I have kept it aside. So I am now left with only 11 diamonds. So this is the probability of both cards drawn to be diamonds given that I have lost a diamond. Now the uh, likelihood of A with respect to the second event. When I am drawing two cards, when the first card, when the card I have lost is a diamond, when I am drawing the first card, I have lost a card. So I have only 51 cards left. I have not lost any diamond, so I am left with 13 diamonds. Now when I am drawing the first card, I have already lost one card, I have drawn one card, now I only have 50 cards left. But since I have not lost any diamond, when I am drawing the second card, I have already drawn one diamond in the first case. So now there are 12 diamonds left. So guys, you are done with three steps. You are almost done with 90% of the question. Now the final part would be to apply Bayes' theorem. Now you have been asked to find the probability of the lost card being a diamond. Given that both cards drawn are diamonds. So that would be according to Bayes' theorem. The probability of event E1 multiplied by the probability of A given E1 divided by the total probability of event A. That is the probability of E1 multiplied by the probability of A given E1 plus the probability of E2 multiplied by the probability of A given E2. Now all I have to do is substitute the values. Probability of event E1 is 1 by 4 multiplied by A given E1 is 12 into 11 by 51 into 50 whole divided by 1, by 1 into 12 into 11 by 4 into 51 into 50 plus the probability of event E2 3 by 4 multiplied by uh, 13 into 12 into by 51 into 50. Now you can see that the denominators are common here. When I just add them, they will have a common denominator. I'll just cancel this out. So I'll be left with 12 into 11 by 12 into 11 plus 3 into th 3 into 13 into 12. You can see that I have 12 common everywhere. I'll take 12 common out from the denominator. It would be 12 into 11 by 12. If I take 12 common out, I'll be left with 11. Plus if I take 12 common out from here, I'll be left with 3 into 13. I can cancel out the 12 from here and my answer would be 11 by 
11 plus 3 times 13 is 39. So the probability of the lost card being a diamond, given that the both cards drawn are diamonds, is 11 by 50. So this is how you use Bayes theorem in any question. And believe me, you can use this technique in any question which has to be solved using Bayes theorem. I hope all of you understood what Bayes theorem is and how to use it in a question. Thank you. Any doubts? You said that conditional probability is uh, when we find like, the probability of an event when an event has already occurred. And then for Bayes theorem, what we said basically the same thing. So then what's the difference between these? Um, sorry, I'll get back to you. Basically, what's the difference between conditional probability and Bayes theorem? Um, in conditional probability, you, you uh, yes, you are right. I did say the same th did say the same thing for both. But during Bayes theorem, the sample space has been divided into many different events, and the occurrence of this event depends on all these events. As you can see, I have used the total probability of the occurrence of A in the formula for Bayes theorem. So during Bayes theorem, the occurrence of this event E1 depends on multiple events. Whereas in conditional probability, it, is not, it does not depend on multiple events. <laughs>